Hi guys, I'm Lucy. I'm the design coordinator here at Shell Brothers. You would usually see me on preview day. I schedule the appointments and I do what we call a change order. So if you add or change anything after design day, it is done through me. So most likely not the last time we see each other. I'll probably see you here on design day and usually not the last time we chat. Myself and our three designers are gonna give you a tour of the design center today to give you different information on the products that we offer so you can make a more educated and hopefully easier decision on design day. Let's get started. Hey guys, Rihanna here with Shell Brothers. I'm one of the design consultants here. Um, there are three of us, so there's a high chance you'll be meeting with me during your design appointment. We're gonna take a couple of minutes to go through some of the exterior options uh, that you'll have to make on your design day. Um, this is our exteriors room. When you're here in real life, you'll get to kind of walk through, see, touch and feel everything. Um, but we're gonna go through some of the things to think about before your design appointment to better prepare you for design day. Um, the exterior of your home is huge huge, it's a really big detail and we really want you to have a good idea of what you want, what's important to you uh, before your design appointment. That way we're not going through things and stressing more than necessary on the details of the exterior of the home. Reason being, you have a huge, huge opportunity to get out to the community and look at homes. You get to see these colors in real life, something that we don't necessarily get to do with all of our other textures and finishes, but we can certainly do with the exterior colors. Um, we really encourage encourage you to drive through your community in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon, because colors look different in all these different lights. Um, so drive through your community. If you can see your home type in your community, that's fantastic. Um, if you see a color on a home or a color package or combo that you like, even better, take pictures of these things, save them, um, put them in your collages, show them with your salesperson. If your salesperson is available, then they might be able to see the color and kind of give you an idea of, yeah, uh, this is available, this is how much it would cost, um, or you know, going over different details of that. Through different communities, there are different specification levels, and that's really important. Um, every community has different requirements for the homes, the colors, um, and the packages. First thing to suggest is be familiar if your community is one of those communities that has more restrictions. Uh, restrictions being predetermined color packages. Um, there are a few communities that we have out there that a lot the colors predetermined. Not all of them do, but you should know if that's one of your communities or not. What that would mean to you is if you were in one of those communities, you would be a little bit more restricted on the different colors within your package. Doesn't mean that you can't still pick out your color, but once we decide on one, there are predetermined rules and colors that go with that. Um, we can still make a home beautiful, but that's something that you should know about before you get here. Um, another thing, different communities have different details included on the elevation of the home um, than others. So be familiar with your community specifications as far as different details and features that are included on the front of your home and things that are optional on the front of your home. For instance, some of our neighborhoods, stone is included on the front of the home. Um, some of our neighborhoods, shake accents and metal roofs are included, some they are not. So that is definitely something important to know. Your sales team can help answer those questions for you. The reason why you might want to know that is because when we come for the design appointment that's going to limit you or not limit you on these choices and maybe make things a little bit easier, a little bit more difficult when making these decisions. The other thing to think about is that every community that we have, we have this thing called the triangle rule. You've probably heard about it more than once. To summarize the triangle rule, imagine myself as your home. In front of me is the street. The triangle being a triangle that encompasses your home. The home directly to the left and to the right, and then in front of you are within your triangle rule. Now it's not always that black and white. We are designers, so we try to take more things in consideration sometimes than others, um, but generally that is your triangle rule. Some communities are a little bit more stringent than others. Um, what the triangle rule means is that we cannot have the same exact color as the homes around you in that triangle. 
or the same exact elevation of the home. That's what makes our communities look special and different. That's what made you fall in love with our community in the first place. Um, so we have to follow those rules for everyone. Now when I say some communities are a little bit more stringent and we have to take a little bit more into consideration, that simply means um, some of our ARCs and our communities hold us to a little bit tighter rules, meaning maybe not just the same exact colors within that triangle, but sometimes we have to take other homes into consideration. Um, and sometimes we have to take colors that are similar into consideration. There's only a couple of these communities, so don't worry too much. We will know exactly what you can and cannot have at your design appointment, so it won't be a mystery. Um, your sales team can sometimes help identify some of that information for you before you get here. Um, it really just depends on if that home has already started or not. So those are the things that we will try to tell you to prepare for and bits and pieces of advice as far as doing homework before you get here. Once you get here is when the fun starts. First thing we're going to do is ask you, hey, have you thought of what colors you want on the outside of the house? Hopefully you have. Um, if you have, we're going to take that and run with it. Um, you might not have pinned down to the exact color, but you might have a pretty good idea or you're going to show me some pictures of what you like. Off of that information, I'm going to start pulling some of our selections. Um, right here, we basically have an interactive wall. Um, this is some of our siding colors and these are some of the shape colors. The first thing that we'll pick out is the siding color. Um, siding colors, very importantly, are separated by tier. You're going to hear that word a lot during your design appointment and throughout this whole building process. Um, different siding colors are priced out in different tiers. Um, General rule of thumb, if it's a darker, richer shade, it's a higher tier. If it's a lighter tone, it's a lesser tier. If it's a tier one, that's an included color. So no fears, no worries. If you're picking out a color that says tier one, you're not gonna have to pay anything additional. Um, if you're looking at a tier two or a three, um, there is gonna be a little bit of an additional investment for those colors. Um, once we have an idea of the siding, your community might have the option to do shake accents on the home. Again, this is one of those areas where it's not necessarily included on all um, elevations of homes or all communities. So again, your um, sales team can help identify for you what's included on your home if you do have questions about that. Um, so we have a siding and we have a shake. Now, if you have siding and a shake, um, you have seen some of the homes where we've done two colors on the front. You don't have to do two different colors. If you're a little more simple and want the siding and the shake accents to complement each other, we can certainly do that. You don't necessarily have to do a bunch of different colors on the front of the home, but if you do like that, we have that option for you as well. Um, once we've picked out your siding and your shake color, um, then we will speak about different um, shingle colors. They're all the same material, all the same benefit, no pros or cons. It's an aesthetic detail at this point. Um, then we will also talk about metal roof accents. We'll talk about the shutter color and style. But again, some of these details and features are not necessarily available on all of the homes. Um, but just to generalize the details that we'll go through back here. Um, once we've picked those things out, we've pretty much got the colors of the home decided. Then we're gonna go through some other simpler details um, like the front door style, the color on the front door. Some communities have restrictions on this, some do not. So that'll be something that we'll work through, but not the biggest detail of your day, so no worries. Um, once we've gotten through pretty much putting the outside colors of the home together, then we're going to talk on some other finer details in here. We have a lot of um, cool resources. Um, if you are doing a courtyard, for instance, we'll keep you back here for a little bit longer and we'll go through the different courtyard features. Um, we have different pavers back here. Um, you'll get to pick out the paver color. If you want to do different sizes of pavers, different tiers of pavers, we certainly have different tiers available for pavers, but we'll identify for you what comes included in your courtyard and then the other options. On top of that, we have optional features like doing uh, fireplaces, grills, water features, trellis, all sorts of neat things that we'll go through if you do decide on doing a courtyard. Um, if we are 
doing porches and decks, we'll also go through those details and have you pick out those finishes. We'll even talk about the garage for a few minutes. Um, not a whole lot going on with the garage, but we have options available to insulate the garage door and the exterior walls of the garage. It does not come included that way, but it's an option to do if that's something that interests you. Um, we also have options to paint the inside of the garage. It does not come painted included. It comes drywalled and taped. Um, then we also have options we can add like a exterior keypad to the garage. In some communities, you'll even get to pick out the glass style in the front of the garage door. Um, all community specific for all these things, but there's a lot of little details that we'll talk about in the exteriors room. It's usually one of the first areas that we'll talk about during a design appointment because there's a lot of things to go through. So there's a lot of areas to cover, a lot of things that you can do without even being at the design studio to get that homework done and really prepare yourself for the exterior colors. It's really important, so try to be prepared for this. It means a lot to us. It really sets the tone in the forefront for the community and how it feels. And again, that's what made you buy into this community because you love the way that it felt and looked when you drove through. Um, that's it for exteriors. I'm gonna hand you off now. You're gonna hear a little bit from our design uh, coordinator, Lucy, and she's gonna talk about all the different flooring options we have for you. It was great to talk with you guys. I'll see you again soon. Hardwood will be one of the first things you go over on design day with your designer. Most people put hardwood throughout the living area of the home, so it's a focal point of the home and something that will dictate a lot of other decisions you make throughout the day. All of the hardwood that we offer is an engineered hardwood. If you're not familiar with engineered hardwood, the top is a hardwood veneer and the middle has a core and that core is made out of recycled hardwood fibers. It is still a natural product. We're gonna use the engineered hardwood as opposed to a regular solid hardwood for a very specific reason. We're down here at the beach, in the summertime it gets very hot, very humid, and there's a ton of moisture in the air. What that allows solid hardwood to do is expand and contract and warp. You won't see that or have that problem with the engineered hardwood. There are a few things I would like you to keep in mind when choosing your hardwood floors. One, when you're talking about wood, there is a hardness scale that ranks from a one to a 12. We have five different species of wood up here that vary on that hardness scale. We have oak, which is the softest hardwood we offer at a three. It's most definitely not the softest hardwood there is out there, but it is gonna be the softest wood we offer. We have maple and birch that come in right in the middle at a six, and then we have hickory and ash that come in at a 10, will be the hardest hardwoods that we offer. Keeping in mind that even at a 10, they're not indestructible, but they are gonna be the least likely to scratch out of the different woods we offer. So if you come in and you tell your designer, we have two big dogs, or we love to entertain and there's a lot of people in and out of our home, she might say, oak might not be the best bet for you, let's look at something that's a little bit harder and more likely to last long in your home for you. Something else to keep in mind, dark hardwood floors are beautiful, but they're gonna show a lot more than light hardwood floors would. So dirt and dust, sand from the beach, pet hair, scratches, all more noticeable on that dark hardwood floor than they would be on a light hardwood floor. It's always gonna come down to personal preference, but something to keep in mind when thinking about how much you would wanna maintain those floors on a day-to-day -day basis. Last but not least, if you choose a floor with a smooth finish and you get a scratch on it, it might be a little bit more noticeable than if you choose a floor with a textured finish, something that has a heavy scrape look or a distressed look or a wire brush look will help to hide those scratches on your floors. We have a tier system in place for hardwood floors as well, so something to keep in mind when preparing for your design studio appointment. Next, we're gonna talk about wall tile. The possibilities are endless when choosing your wall tile. We have ma matching sets that you can choose from. So we choose a wall tile with or without a listello and then a matching floor tile in the same size or a different size on the floor of your bathroom. We also have subway tiles for you to choose from. You would put a subway tile on the wall of your shower and then a complementing floor tile on the floor of your bathroom. You can tile any shower in your home. It doesn't just have to be the master, keeping in mind that a secondary bath has a little bit of a different look and that you would have a fiberglass tub unit and then the wall around that would be tiled and the floor of your bathroom would be tiled to complement. For an additional investment, we can turn any secondary bath into a full shower unit if that's something that you want or need. We have a ton of different tile pan options for you to choose from, keeping in mind that some communities based on their spec level would come included with a fiberglass pan. We have two by two white biscuit and gray pan options to choose from, which will be included in some communities. We then have different pebble looks and we have different mosaic looks. We also have two by two options that will match your tile on your wall and your floor exactly. 
You can tile any shower in your home. It doesn't just have to be the master, keeping in mind that the master has a little bit of a different look and that you would have a fiberglass tub option and the wall around would be tiled and then the floor of the bathroom would be tiled. If in any secondary bath you want or need to change the bathtub into just a shower unit, we are able to do so for an additional investment. You can have just a fiberglass shower unit in any of those baths or you can have tiled showers in those as well. Based on your community spec level, we have different tiers for the wall tile as well. You wanna check with your CSM to see what's included in yours. Next, we'll talk about floor tile. We have two different types of tile. We have ceramic and porcelain. Porcelain tile is gonna be about a thousand times stronger than a ceramic tile is gonna be. Is a ceramic tile gonna crack or chip or break for no reason? No, but it is possible if you drop something on it and it hits just the right way. You won't see that or have that problem with the porcelain tile. Depending on how hard you live in the home or where you're laying this tile, porcelain tile option might be best for you as it'll last longer in your home. Like all of our other selections, we have different tiers when you're talking about tile. Porcelain tile is gonna start at a tier two and above. We have many different sizes and styles of tiles we offer now as well. Depending on the room size, a larger tile might work well. We also have wood look tiles that we're offering. So if you were trying to achieve a wood look look throughout the entire home, but wanted tile, so it would last a little bit longer and resist scratching, a wood look tile might be the way to go for you. A wood look for your bathroom is also an option. You could have a wood look tile on your floor and then choose a complementing floor tile for the wall of your shower. That's it for tile, next we'll talk about carpet. Carpet is included in all of your great rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms, hallways, and stairs. Like everything else in the design studio, we have different tiers for you to choose from. We also have different carpet pads. A six pound pad is included with your home and an eight pound pad would be an additional investment. Whether you're choosing a tier one carpet or going up to a tier five, we're always gonna recommend that eight pound pad as, it, as it's gonna make your carpet last longer, feel more plush when you're walking over it, and if it's on a second floor, help with a sound barrier between floors. This additional investment is gonna be extremely minimal in regards to the life that it'll add to your carpet. Most of the carpets we offer, Shaw applies their R2X stain resistance to the carpet. What this means is if you spill something on it, it's gonna beat up to the top and be very easy for you to wipe off. It's not gonna be able to immediately soak into your carpet fibers. So those of you with pets, kids, grandkids, something with a stain resistance on it might be beneficial to help your carpet last longer in your home. And almost all carpets that we offer have this. You can mix and match carpet however you need to in the home. So let's say you put a tier four carpet in your master bedroom. That does not mean that you have to put that carpet everywhere you choose carpet for your home. It does not mean that you have to put that tier carpet everywhere you choose carpet. You can say to your designer, we'll put the tier four carpet in our master, but we also don't get very many guests that are staying the night, so that included our tier one carpet will work fine in those guest bedrooms. We also have different types and styles of carpet for you to choose from. We have both nylon and polyester carpets. A nylon carpet is going to be one of the most durable synthetics there is to offer. So it would be great for a heavy traffic area of the home as you wouldn't be able to see that traffic pattern. While polyester is not quite as durable as a nylon carpet, it's going to be extremely fade resistant. Different styles of carpet will work better in different areas of the home than others. For instance, something that's more plush and has a higher pile wouldn't be as great for a heavy traffic area as over time it would start to crush and you'd be able to see that traffic pattern. Something like a Berber or something with a lower pile would be great for a heavy traffic area as you wouldn't be able to see that traffic pattern over in time. You also, want to see, you also want to keep in mind that something like a Berber or a loop carpet might not be great if you have pets or small kids as it's easy for something to get in those loops and pull, leading the carpet to unravel. Next, we're gonna talk with Corey about cabinetry. Hey guys, my name is Corey. I'm one of the design consultants here at Shell Brothers. I'll be talking to you today a little bit about the cabinetry for your new home. The first drawer I'm going to pull out here is going to show you an example of the select line construction. Select line construction is going to have furniture grade plywood, exposed rails, and it's not going to have full extension or soft close. When it comes to premier lines cabinets, you will have dovetail construction, hidden rails, and you have full extension and the soft close feature. Depending on the type of ki kitchen that you have selected, it's gonna depend on the type of construction that you have in most cases. If you have questions about what type of construction is available for your kitchen, just go back and ask your community sales manager. 
When it comes to bathrooms, you are gonna start off at the select line construction. It is going to be those exposed rails, furniture gray plywood, and it's not gonna have the soft close feature. So don't forget about those. If you are interested in having the premier line, make sure you price that out right away. Since we've now nailed the construction of your cabinets for your new home, let's move into the other room. We're gonna talk about the different overlays that are available for your cabinets. When it comes to the different styles that are available as far as overlays go in your cabinets, we've got two styles, half overlay and a full overlay. With a half overlay cabinet, you are going to see a little bit of the framing of the cabinet exposed, which means seams are gonna be a little bit more visible. When it comes to a full overlay cabinet, most of the drawer and the door are actually gonna be overlaying the framing. For the most part, people are doing full overlay cabinets in kitchens. Of course, you don't have to. Pricing is always going to start at a half overlay. If full overlay is important to you, let your community sales manager know and they'll get that priced out in your sales estimate. One other thing to consider when we're talking cabinetry is the finish of the cabinet. This particular cabinet here is a stained cabinet. Stained cabinets are always going to be the first price point. If you're interested in something like this, or maybe an aqua cabinet of some kind, uh, you would want to ask your community sales manager to price you out in a specialty tier two finish. That way, you have that price point in your estimate and you can get a white kitchen or a color of your liking. Now that you're a cabinet expert, we're gonna move over to the countertops and you're gonna talk to our design consultant, Karen. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm one of the designers here at Shell Brothers. Um, we are going to be talking about countertops and backsplashes. Uh, the first, we're going to start with kitchen. Uh, we have two different materials to pick from when we're talking about kitchen countertops. We have granite and we have quartz. Um, the included option would be granite. We have different levels of granite and they change in color, um, motion, they have different movements, which you can all see on your online design studio. Um, with granite, it's really nice um, because it has a higher heat resistance than quartz does. Uh, the one drawback people find with granite sometimes is it does or it can have a higher variation. So you, it, it sometimes is a little bit risky because it can come in a little bit different from slab to slab because it is a natural product. Um, the other thing that you have to consider when you're talking about Granite is it is a porous substance. So that just means if you do not properly seal it, it can stain. Um, the good thing with that though is with Shell Brothers, we do have an option to do a granite seal. That's a 15 year warranty um, and that would seal the granite so it takes that maintenance out of that equation. Our other option for kitchen countertops would be quartz. Um, quartz is very popular right now. There is less maintenance when you're talking about quartz. So as I was talking earlier with granite, how it is a porous product, quartz is non-porous. So if you are someone that leaves something on the counter or even you don't wanna risk or have the maintenance of sealing it, um, quartz would be the product for you. It is, um, you can leave a bottle of red wine, maybe that's something I do, on the counter for a week and you would be fine. Um, so that is a very good positive thing with quartz. The other thing with quartz is it is man-made, so there is less variation. So it is more of a consistent product. So even though there is a little bit variation because it's man-made, um, it is contained. So it's not like you're gonna have drastic differences from slab to slab. The one drawback with quartz would be that it does have a less um, heat resistancy than granite. So if you are someone like my sister who tends to take things from the oven, which you're not supposed to do and put it right on the countertop, um, I would say maybe granite would be the better option because it does have a much higher heat resistancy. Um, we all, also, a nice thing with quartz is we have different options. Because it is man-made, they are able to create the looks of where the current trends are going. So a lot of people like lighter countertops now, more white, like grays, and they can create those. So we do have a lot more options when we're looking at quartz products. So after we pick out your countertop, something to focus on would be your backsplash selection. What would be included is gonna be a four inch return of whatever countertop you select. Um, and then it would just be painted drywall above that. If you opt to do a tiled backsplash, we have lots of options to go over with you. You can see them all on the online design studio. Um, 
And then that four inch would be removed and we would tile it all the way down to the countertop. So it's a very nice, clean look. Um, when you're looking at backsplashes, it usually has a lot to do with your countertop. Um, a lot of times when we're doing a more clean, solid looking countertop, we can do a little bit more of an eye-catching um, backsplash with more movement, like a mosaic or something like that. Uh, but when we have a countertop that typically has a lot more movement or color, then that's a lot of times when we use a subway, um, something more clean, so they're not competing. They kind of complement each other very nice, and then you just have one real pop, whether it be the backsplash or the countertop. Um, we have different levels of um, backsplashes. You can see all of those on the online design studio um, or in your selections guide. We have things from tumbled stones to mosaics. Um, we have glass, we have uh, ceramics. So there's all different types for anyone's different style and preference. Um, so take a look, play with it, um, but we will have all day at your design appointment to go over those. So now we're gonna talk about your bathroom countertops. So with bathroom countertops, it's a little bit different as far as the material we start with. What's included in the home would be cultured marble. Um, that is a man-made product. It is like a plastic material. It's all molded, so it's one piece for the countertop and into the sink. We do have different color options. There are six different color options from a very clean, bright white, and then we have some different vein options. Again, you can see all of those on the online design studio. Um, and then if you wanted to do something and invest a little bit more um, into the countertop option in the bathroom, we have natural stones and engineered stones. The one nice thing that comes included with those options are the separate white undermount sinks. That definitely gives it more of like a spa feel, looks a little bit more high end. Um, and we have a lot of different options there. And then the good thing with going with one of those, um, it's, those are a little bit more durable, so they're less likely to stain or scratch. So you are getting a higher quality product with that. Now, talking about any of the countertops, backsplashes, those are big things, big investments. You really wanna spend your time properly preparing. So we can show you a lot of things here, um, but I also would love if you take your time and go to the models where you can really see it in a large scale. Um, because when we're showing you slabs here, it is a little bit smaller. And if you can see it in the model where it's a large scale, I think that's where you're gonna really see the movement that I think is important to see and what might be important to you. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the fireplace for your new home. While the fireplace is always an optional feature, we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences between a traditional fireplace and a modern fireplace. With the traditional fireplace, the first price point is always going to include the Heatalator Caliber 36. That's gonna give you a traditional log set. You're gonna pick a stone surround. You're also going to select a mantle for that fireplace. We also have the Heat and Glow, um, which is almost like a smart firebox in a sense. It's basically going to give you a lot more control of the flame height. You have a thermostat built in um, and you can kind of control everything from your sofa. When it comes to the modern fireplaces, we don't have any in the design studio, but you're gonna wanna pay close attention to all of the model homes as you walk through them. Uh, we've got two different styles. One is called the modern and one is called the mezzo. The mezzo is gonna be the long linear one. Both of them are gonna have glass elements um, and have different features that are available with them as far as fans and things like that that you can add to them as well. Another optional feature available for your fireplace is stone. Stone fireplaces come with a stone mantle and a raised hearth, which is a little bit different than some of our other models. This is a very popular feature, so you'll wanna check it out at all of our model homes. Next, we're gonna switch over to Karen to talk about trim for your new home. Okay, another thing we're gonna talk about during your design appointment will be the interior trim options. We, this covers a lot, so we go over things like interior doors, your baseboard options, um, window casings, crown molding, things like wainscoting. Um, so it does go over a lot of different things. This is an 
an area where you can really kind of put your personal stamp on it as something kind of really eye-catching in a certain room like we do the beams in the great room which can be either stained or painted um, in the pricing it comes included as painted but then we can also do the additional um, request to have it stained to complement the hardwood floors so there's lots of different options that we can go over um, these are all shown in different models so again go on the 3d tours and really pay attention to where they might have put it that is eye-catching for you. Uh, a lot of popular ideas is putting some of the wainscoting in the foyer. Um, it does help protect the wall from when people are walking and things, um, but it also is just a really nice feature when you walk into the home. We will also be covering your railing options. So when we talk about your, if we want to change your posts or your balusters, it comes included as the turn posts and balusters, which you can see on the online design studio. Um, and you can also see here. And then we have options to go with a more clean look with the square, or you could do a little black. And we can also mix. So you can do a different post with a different baluster. Um, and you know that's really nice because a lot of our homes when you first walk in that door you see the hardwood stairs or the stairs coming down um, so that's a really nice feature that you can change kind of to tie in with your personal style um, my favorite thing probably of all the trim would be the wider casings uh, it comes included in most homes check with your salesperson to see what's in your community um, with a two and a quarter but you also have the option of a wider three and a quarter and this is really nice because with Shell Brothers, uh, we have really nice, beautiful windows. So when you do the wider casings, it really just frames it out. And I think it's stunning. Um, so, you know, just something to consider. Uh, we will go over everything, but it, the more you do your homework, the more you pay attention in the models, you'll really kind of see what is important and what is your feel for your home. Right now, I'm in the lighting area of our design studio. While we're kind of showcasing a lot of our optional lighting here, what we're really going to focus on during your design appointment is going to be mainly recess lights um, in areas that they may not come included, which is going to be like your great room, definitely consider adding them there, dining rooms, and some other areas that you think you might spend a lot of time in. A lot of people also consider adding recess lights to their owner's bedrooms um, if you don't plan on putting a light on your ceiling fan. Those are the kinds of things that you're going to want to start to consider. All the lights that are around me right now are optional foyer lights, dining room fixtures, um, and other different, let's say, pendant reference that you might need for your home. You can certainly do these on your own. In a lot of cases, we just include reference, so you don't have to purchase the fixtures through us, but it is an option for you if you want a turnkey experience. Some other things that we're gonna talk about during your design appointments might include custom closets, um, different railing types, little things like different electrical options you might need for your home. So keep those all in mind as well when you start to do your homework. Thanks guys. Hey everyone, it's Brianna again. By now you've probably heard from the other girls, Corey, Lucy, and Karen, um, about cabinets, about flooring, tile, uh, countertops, lots of fun stuff. Um, next, we're gonna talk a little bit about appliances. Appliances will get covered while we're doing your kitchen details. It'll come towards the end part of the kitchen. Uh, once we've uh, already discussed and finalized the finishes for the kitchen, as far as the cabinet color go, um, countertop, backsplash, all that fun stuff. We'll come back into this area and then we'll start going through your appliance choices. The first thing when we come to appliances um, is being familiar and understanding the actual configuration of your kitchen for your home. We have plenty of different floor plans out there and with every floor plan we have different kitchen configurations available to that floor plan. Um, the configuration of the kitchen is a huge structural detail that is usually ironed out through the contractual process with your salesperson. We like to have all that um, figured out before design day, that way we really know where to take off and run in direction as far as exactly what we're doing with the finishes. Um, there are different configurations of kitchens as um, far as standard kitchen, gourmet kitchen, pro kitchen. We even do some chef's kitchens and some floor plans. Um, it even goes as far as having extended kitchen versus non-extended kitchen. 
these are all very floor plan specific and things, details, questions that if we're not 100% on um, before your design appointment, I highly suggest meeting or discussing with your uh, sales team about exactly what kitchen you are signed up for and making sure that you understand what that means. Are we happy with it? And just exploring those options and being familiar with those. The configuration of the kitchen has a lot to do with not only the look of the kitchen, but also what appliances and how those are laid out um, will go. So once we figure it out exactly what kitchen we're in, um, we'll come over here and then we'll start talking about the appliances that are now available for your specific kitchen. Um, the first thing that we'll pick out when it comes to appliances, we'll start talking about refrigerators. Um, once we've done refrigerators, we'll talk about um, dishwashers, microwaves, ovens. Some of our floor plans you'll get a wall oven. Some of them you'll get a range. Um, some of them it's available to have two wall ovens. Um, lots of different options. If we don't have a range you might be able to do a cooktop. Um, different configurations of the kitchens call out exactly what type of appliance is going there. Not necessarily what manufacturer or whether it's gas or electric if it's single or double but just what are we getting in this location are we getting a range or are we getting a cooktop with a wall oven those details aren't things that we're able to necessarily manipulate um, those are predetermined based upon the structure of the kitchen um, when we're going through all these details we don't have every single appliance here but we do have a, a pretty decent amount of them we'll just be able to bounce through them, show you some of the key features. We have all of the model numbers and the product information to get you through this. But very importantly, all of the appliances are also listed in your selections guide. Um, you're not gonna see pricing in your selections guide, but your uh, sales team can always help you with pricing and they can tell you what's available in your floor plan, um, what things you should be considering and looking out for um, and going through those more fine-tuned details. Now, no matter what kitchen you're in, um, no matter what floor plan, all of the appliances as far as the manufacturers will start out as uh, GE appliances. Through GE, we have different levels of appliances. GE goes uh, GE, GE Profile, GE Cafe, and even some of our different configurations like a chef's kitchen, um, they offer GE Monogram. Once we're done with GE, we have different manufacturers such as Bosch and Viking that would also be available, but these would all be at additional prices, um, which again, can be given to you through your sales team if those are things that you are interested in. We always have the pricing during the design appointment, but if you wanna get a little bit more homework done, have more under your belt, be better prepared, and if you really are interested in different levels of appliances, please talk to your sales team so that we are better off during the design appointment to get you uh, to the finish line. Once we are done going through appliances, we will also take a few moments to talk about the different sink options available for your floor plan. We'll also go through the different uh, kitchen faucets available, um, different odds and ends. We can do things like soap dispensers or pot fillers, all fun things to go through, differences between wants and needs. So just think about those things, if that's something that's important to you or not. Um, the other thing we will talk about, probably just for a couple of seconds during your design appointment, will be uh, laundry appliances. So throughout um, the home, different things are included in different places as always, but washer and dryer is one of those things that we are not required um, to have installed in the home prior to settlement. So we do leave out of the price of the home as an option for our buyers. What we do include is what we call a stub out um, for your washer and dryer connection so that you'll be ready to go. You're not obligated to purchase appliances through us, um, but if you'd like to have that done for you prior to settlement and also reflected in the price of your home, we do offer um, different appliance packages. The washers and dryers would be GE. That's the only manufacturer we do work with for laundry room. Um, we essentially have a top loading set or a front loading set. Pricing is available through your sales team. They have that information if you'd like to know exactly what those prices are before your design appointment. Um, but if you choose not to do appliances through us, that's okay. You'll be ready to go. Just go ahead and make sure you have something set up post settlement so that you have either someone come in and deliver those appliances so you'll be ready to go or so that you have them um, removing them in yourself uh, but again not obligated to go through washer and dryers with us but we certainly leave that as an option for you um, it was great talking with you guys we'll have fun putting your kitchen together do your homework and be prepared I hope this video was helpful in preparing you for your big day 
Don't forget to use the online design studio and all the tools that we have for you in order to prepare for your big day and do your homework. Remember to get out there, follow up with your sales team, make sure you're familiar with all the options available in your home, um, primarily structural items, get pricing, and be prepared. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.